Today, Superman and Lois, Season 3, Episode 4. Now, this episode, Clark, Clark, I ain't seen Clark like this in a long time. Clark, Clark, he goes crazy. Clark, he goes crazy in this episode. Y'all seen the clip. You know what I'm talking about. So, like I said, it's going to get crazy. Look, what Clark does is actually insane. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it does. Like, I ain't seen Clark in this way in a long time. So, we started this episode with Jordan and Clark in a forest fire. And Clark, he has to end up leaving Jordan alone because he heard a loud sound at the, at the house. So, he thinks that Lois actually collapsed. Since she knows she is going for chemotherapy. So, he dashes off to the house and apparently Lois is just broken apart. So that's what we're going to be dealing with the rest of this episode. Yeah. Clark is going to be treating Lois like a fragile person, even though that's exactly what she did not want to happen. And he ends up telling the boys to just leave their mom alone. Don't get any problems for her. It's going to be a resting day for her because, you know, it's been a long time after the chemo and she needs rest. So he just tells her to move away from Bruno Mannheim and they're going to just watch movies for the rest of the day. But, of course, something ends up interrupting her. So Jonathan, he he ends up confronting uh, Candace's dad, Emmett, which results in him getting a clock across the face and end up getting this big bruise. So, so then we also have Jordan, who gra his grandpa says that they're going to go on a fishing trip, even though that's a lie, and he actually takes it to the barber because he feels like he needs to shave his hair, or cut his hair. His curls are going away. His luscious curls. Now I'm gonna be for real. I'm like Jordan, bro. I would never fucking do this. So he says these horrible things to the colonel. He even says like, you know, you're not a hero. How would you know? You're not a real hero, and all that stuff. And he's just like, no, I'm not doing that. And he ends up just leaving and dashing off. You can truly see that the general is actually very, very, very emotionally damaged by that. Emotional damage. So. Then we have this other plot line with um, John and pretty much he wants to go talk to his sister because he thinks there may be more information about what happened to his Earth One self. And <clears throat> John and John learned that his Earth One self was the one who created the weapon for Bruno Mannheim. Because, you know, he wants to investigate. But Clark he ends up telling her, like, what Lois did. And obviously, he's pretty furious about that. So he told Lois to leave her alone. But he doesn't confront Lois about it because, you know, rest day. All that stuff. So he ends up going by himself. And he's going to go talk to his earth and sister. Yeah. And then we also have the plot line with Sarah and uh, the Sarah aftermath, right? So Lana, she ends up trying to call Sarah. And Kyle, he still doesn't know the full situation of what happened. But Sarah says that, you know, Lana hit her. But that's when Lana starts calling and she ends up declining, even though Kyle, he's just like, okay, like, what's up? Like, why do you want, like, why are you calling her? Like, what happened? And she doesn't get a chance to explain since she wants to go talk to Sarah because she feels so bad. You saw what Lana was like in the last episode. But she ends up declining. And Sarah, she says that she hit, you know, she hit her. And she doesn't explain the full story of why that happened. So Kyle, he's just like, I, no, I can't believe, no, we're gonna talk to your mama right now because she has no reason to put her hands on my child, on our child. Like, she knows she should never do that. He does not fuck with that. So he ends up confronting Lana, and Lana, she says she feels so bad for it. And the only reason she did it was because Sarah, you know, what she said last episode, that she was the reason that her dad, you know, that Kyle ended up cheating on her. Even though that's not true, that's not true at all. Lana is not the reason for that, and you probably should never say that to your mom. So she, she felt emotionally hurt, like in every right. Honestly, Sarah should have gotten slapped earlier, bro. Like, for real. She, she annoying as hell, for real. I mean, I would have slapped her too, to be honest. You know, all of you guys would have slapped her too, for real. Come on. We all know. But yeah, Kyle, he didn't hear that rest of the story because she, she never told the rest of the story. So Kyle, he ends up going to Sarah and just like, okay, you didn't tell me that. And Sarah's just like, you know, didn't matter. Did it really matter? Like why she did it? She slapped me. But he ends up going to this whole story about how Sarah, Lana was the one who stood by her side while she was going through that whole suicide thing. So pretty much after she passed out of taking all those pills, y'all remember that story in season one, about the whole suicide attempt, Lana was giving her CPR 
you know, on her hands and knees, just giving her CPR. And when the ambulance came, she still never left her side, which kind of made Sarah reconsider what she said. And now she kind of almost, well, not almost, she does feel bad. She genuinely feels bad for what she said. She finally realized what she said was wrong. So they're going to have a meetup and they're going to go meet at a diner. But let's get back to uh, Jonathan and the boys. So Jonathan, he goes home. Lois, she tells him to come back down here because she ends up seeing his face with bruises. She's just like, okay, what happened? Did you get into a fight and all that stuff? And yeah. Clark, he ends up going to her. And Jonathan, he ends up riding Clark out anyway. He ends up riding Clark out saying that, you know, he didn't want to mess. He, Clark told him not to mess with her. And, you know, yeah. Lois was obviously. So after Lois confronts Clark about, you know, him telling people behind her back, just treat her like a fragile person she's so angry at him because you know this is the exact opposite thing she's doing the exact opposite thing she told him not you know not to do yeah so they kind of come to a common understanding that he needs to just back up you know, just back away just a little bit and you know stop doing that stop treating her like a fragile person that's exactly what she did not want to do and just because she's going through cancer doesn't mean she can't be doesn't mean she didn't have responsibilities. So Clark, he understands that and what's it her thing. And she even tells him about how Jonathan has a black eye. But Clark doesn't get to learn the full story because he has to go away to the DOD. So Clark, he doesn't get to talk much because he has to go back to the DOD. But Clark, he doesn't get to talk much because he has to go back to the DOD. And they think they may have discovered how Clark actually got his blood taken in the first place. So they had stored Clark's blood, the DOD, after his fight with Allie Austin. And pretty much they stored it because they feel like, you know, what if they have another medical problem like that again? They're going to need his blood. So Clark, he is pissed. He is so pissed off that he actually stored his blood. And the lady, she says that none of all the samples are accounted for. None of the samples have been released. None of the, nothing is missing. But you know, Bruno still somehow got his blood anyway. So I guess he just got it from like a single drop that they didn't even notice. So Clark ends up destroying the vials, burning all of them, and he's just like, any blood you guys have left over, destroy it. And that was pretty much it. That's all the blood they had. So yeah, that ends that. But then we move right back over to Bruno and John. So Bruno, he has pictures like he the CIA. He literally caught John and Clark in 4K talking with each other. And he also has a picture of his Earth One sister being strapped to a bomb. And he says he's gonna he's he's gonna set it off. And he won't kill her unless John leaves him alone. So John, he immediately starts looking for his sister and he eventually does find her. And the bomb is actually made by his design since he's one once created it. So he actually can dismantle it and he saves her. Yeah. But then he goes back to John again and he starts trying to strangle him. Now it looks like he's about to kill him, but Bruno says, you're not gonna kill him because I have shooters pretty much everywhere, all over New Orleans. And on my command, they will, if anything happens to me, they will kill all of their family. They'll kill all of your family if you do anything to me, pretty much. So John, he lets him go and he just flies off. So that pretty much is that story. Right? So then we go back to Lois and the boys. So the boys, they tell exactly what happened, how this whole thing started, you know, Jonathan moving truck and he says that Emmett, Candace's dad, hit him and Lois is obviously furious and they go to confront Emmett at his house. So Lois, and this is what I love, I love about Lois, bro. She she literally goes to Emmett. She ain't scared of nothing. She is not scared of him. She tells Emmett straight to his face that she's not scared of him. And she says, if you ever hit my son or burn me and my family ever again, I will call the police 
and you will be arrested. The only reason I'm not arresting you now is because of Candace. So it's, Lois is stepping up. Lois is gangster for real, you know? <laughs> but that's when Image starts flexing his block. Yeah. Yeah. Bruno, he's, he's strapped. Bruno is strapped. I'm not Bruno. Emmett is strapped now. And he says that he's going to kill her if she doesn't get off his property. And they don't leave him alone. Yeah. So they end up leaving. And that's that. But then Clark ends up coming home. And he's just like, okay, so how did you get that little shiner that Jonathan got? And pretty much they tell him it's because Emmett hit Jonathan. And he actually threatened to kill him. Now Lois, she tells him like, don't, you know, this is not a job for Superman, but Clark, Clark, he, this is the scene I'm talking about. This is the scene I'm talking about. Clark, he needs bro. <laughs> but anyway, let's move back to Sarah and Lana and Kyle. Anyway, let's move over back to Sarah and uh, Kyle and Lana. So Lana, she ends up saying, I'm sorry. I feel so bad and I'll never do that again, I promise. And Sarah, she's just like, okay. She says, I'm sorry for saying all those things to you too. And she's just like, it's gonna take some time for us to like rebuild our relationship. But they're gonna start fresh, it's a fresh new relationship. She ends up pulling her hand away when like Lana goes to reach for it. But they have forgiven each other. They're ready to start fresh and all that stuff. That's when Daddy Clark comes in. This is the scene I was talking about, the scene I was talking about. So after he hears from, after getting home and hearing what Lois tells him about how Emmett put his hands on um, Jonathan and he, you know, threatened to kill Lois, he's gonna pop, pop, right? So he goes to confront him in the diner and he's like, we need to talk. Don't ever put your hands on my son ever again. We, you know, we're gonna have a conversation outside. You know, he's trying to go outside. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this. Now, Clark, he doesn't want to fight. He doesn't want to fight in front of Candace. <laughs> He's ready to throw hands with any. He's ready to throw hands, but he really doesn't want to fight in front of Candace, you know, that's her dad. But Emma, he's just being a fucking asshole. He pretty much just tells him to go fuck off. I'm not going to talk to you, right? And he ends up trying to push Clark, but of course it doesn't work. Weak, bitch. <laughs> so he's just like, I don't want to fight you because just, you know, you're like, Candace is right there. But he's just like, it doesn't matter. She's seen me do this tons of times. So he does try to swing on him. And Clark, he ends up grabbing his head and slamming it right into the crop and right into the counter and says, if you ever touch my son again, I'm gonna beat your ass pretty much. He's like, I'm gonna beat your ass <laughs> for real. I like, he made him just look like a little bitch. <laughs> for real. He's just like, if you ever do it again, I'm gonna call the police. I'm gonna call the sheriff and you're gonna be arrested. Now, wasn't that black dude? Hold on. Now, if I'm not mistaken, isn't that black dude in the in the diner? Isn't he the sheriff? I, yeah, I was kind of confused by that, but um, yeah. Candace, she's like, I can't believe my dad would do that. Like, I know he was bad, but I didn't think he was that bad. So she's like, Can I go see him? Can I go apologize to Jonathan? And Park agrees to take her. And yeah, so she's just crying and it like Clark made a huge scene. Like Kyle was in there, he's just like, whoa, uh, are you okay there, Clark? Like, damn, I ain't seen you like this. Like, yeah, Clark was, <laughs> I've been seeing this whole clip like blow up online right now too. Everybody's just like, he was so hot during that scene. That's what everybody keeps on saying. Like, bro, Clark, <laughs> he, he may have made a few people Tyler, you may have gotten a few people to call him, you know, call you their crush. You know, you may be the new crush, bro. So, for the girls and for the dudes too, probably. <laughs> All right, so they might, you might be someone's new man crush. Ain't mine, but okay. So, Clark, he ends up, he ends up taking Candace. Candace, she feels so bad about it. She's like, I'm sorry. And Jonathan's just like, you know, it's not your fault. Dad's just a terrible person. But she can't go back there. Clark and Lois, they agree to just like, let her stay here. And yeah. Jonathan, he ends up taking Candace to her place so they can get her boxes. And apparently her dad has left. And I think they said he's leaving town now already. So I guess he didn't really have much stuff. But yeah, he's left town. And you know, yeah. 
so it's the next day. Jonathan agrees to take Candace to work. And yeah, Candace is just staying. And she has nowhere else to go because I'm guessing her mom's dead. I don't know if she ever said that. I think she said her mom is dead or she doesn't really have any other relatives. So if their parents are divorced, her mom's probably in Metropolis. But yeah, we don't really have anybody else, I guess. So Clark, Clark and uh, Lois, they end up telling Jordan to go apologize to their grandpa. Jordan, he ends up going back. He ends up understanding what he said was wrong. He ends up apologizing to the Colonel. And the Colonel, he's actually understanding. He's like, yeah, I actually get it. Because, you know, when he was young, of course, like, why would he ever want to shave his hair? He doesn't want to be bald. It's not Lex Luthor. So, he actually ends up giving Jonathan, not Jonathan, Jordan his first suit. Yes, Jordan has his suit. He has a mask. Kind of looks like the Incredibles or Raccoon. So then we move over to back to Lois and Clark and they're talking to John and Lois, she apologizes for what happened to his sister and you know, how they got in that mess. But John says that he has to put security measures so the rest of the family, you know, the, can't, that Bruno can't hurt the rest of the family, right? So they come up with a new plan. Lois is gonna admit to a, to the other, to another hospital where Bruno controls in the city. Yeah, you get what I mean. So she's gonna go to a hospital that Bruno controls in the city, and that way she can still get treatment, but she can also still be investigating Bruno or have a person on the inside. Yeah, so that's the plan. So we turn back to Bruno, and he already knows what Lois is trying to do. Now he doesn't know exactly what she wants, but she saw, but he saw that she admitted to the hospital. And his lackey says, you know, I can get rid of her. But he says, no, he's going to be watching her. Yeah. And that is the end of the episode. So what did I think? I think this episode was great. This episode was good as always. I love that there was more action in this episode. Thank God, because we really don't get too much action. I get it. It's a drama. Uh, the whole Lana and Lois, the whole Lana and Sarah thing, I'm glad that got resolved in one episode. Yeah. Honestly, I'm kind of getting tired of Sarah. But another thing is, I'm kind of getting tired of Jordan, because Jordan really doesn't have anything interesting. This is what I'm going to bring up. Jordan doesn't really have anything interesting about his storyline. Like, we know exactly where his storyline is going to go. It's going to be super cool. But it's like, why do we need that? Because we have Clark. He can pretty much do everything that John, that Jordan can do. But I get it. You know, when Clark's not there, obviously Jordan's going to need to step up. But for the most part, it's just like, so is Jordan just going to be there just helping Clark? Is that it? Is he just going to be there in the background? Just, yeah. There's no, there's like really no interesting thing they're doing with Jordan this season. It just doesn't really feel interesting. It's like last season. Like last season, he was trying to figure out his powers, but now he's already figured out his powers. Like they went through that whole time skip of him just already knowing how to use his powers when they could have actually just developed it over time. Seeing him struggle how to with using his powers, that could have been interesting, but they didn't do that. Yeah. I feel like y'all should have it to be like, maybe there's some like tragic accident where he's trying to save everyone, but he can't. He end, they end up getting killed. And now Jonathan, now Jordan is going to end up contemplating whether he wants to be a hero or not. Does he really want to do the superhero thing? Because now he has this big thing on his conscience. Just something like that. Something more interesting. Because we're not really seeing anything interesting. But it was good to see Jonathan finally get a storyline. And yeah, I like this entire episode. Lois, she was completely right once again. And yeah, I enjoyed everything. Bruno Mannheim is actually seeming like to be a real threat. Like he's a real threat. Like he's actually not something to fuck with. So that's a nice touch. But anyway, yeah, what did you guys think of the episode? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it mad? Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys for 180 subscribers. And don't forget to check out my Flash video when that comes out. And yeah, I want to put you on Richard Irby, but I reach my uncle Tony's parents to share the story. Share with your cousins, share with your uncle, share with everybody. Bye, guys. Have an amazing life. See you all. <laughs>